were moving to Iowa and he was Alex was living in Kansas at the time with his parents and so we we stopped to meet him I was really excited but we when we stopped to see him he he didn't look like a five-month-old he was so tiny and and you could see through him and he hadn't been to see a doctor so I called right from the house where he lived and they came and they took him to the hospital immediately he was diagnosed as a failure to thrive when he went to the hospital he started to gain weight they sent him home he started to lose weight so they weren't going to send him back so David and I we went and got him and he was seven months old and he's been with us ever since I tried to find a job. I couldn't find a job. Apparently being a stay-at-home mom doesn't qualify you for anything out there. So I decided to go back to school and become a pharmacy tech. I had been in school a couple months and um, me and my daughter were home and um, that's when I got the phone call that my husband had been in that accident. I was on my way home from work and on Bear Valley Road just before Amethyst when a uh, driver had made an illegal left-hand turn in front of me and I hit her at 50 about 50 miles an hour broadside and went head first ejected from the motorcycle I suffered a fractured neck I tore the ACL MCL in my left knee uh, torn labrum in my left shoulder torn rotor cuff in my left shoulder ruptured discs in my neck ruptured discs in the middle of my back and lower back it just everything happened so fast and um, thank God he wasn't in the hospital long but he was hurt pretty bad and uh, when he came home I took time away from school so that I could stay home and help him you know and help out with the babies and it's the worst feeling in the world when you can't do the things that you're supposed to do the basic things you know to be the husband to be the father to be the person that takes care of the family and you're helpless and that is that, that's a very bad feeling when David had his accident I wanted to go back to school we knew that we would still need a little extra help so we invited Alexander's biological grandparents to come and live with us so they came and they moved in and they got to know the babies and they helped a great deal. And then when we felt that he had recovered enough that I could go back to school and concentrate back on that, I went back to school. I went and I graduated. And when David had reco recovered enough to um, feel confident enough that he was ready to go back to work, he couldn't find anything, so he decided to start up his own company, which was a huge relief because now he can be his own boss, he can work his own hours. He's an awesome dad. Shortly after Christmas of last year, Alex started losing weight and he was a meltdown every five minutes. We took him to the ER. When we handed over our paperwork, all the doctors and nurses, they just came out of the woodwork. And of course, Alex is screaming bloody murder because of the autism. They put him in the ambulance and they took him to Riverside Children's Hospital where he spent a week in the PICU. And uh, we learned everything we never knew about type 1 diabetes. All the challenges that we face every day are what makes us stronger. And we definitely came out stronger as a family as a result of everything that happened. I am a firm believer that it takes one adult to change the life of a child. And I had that. I just want to give that back to the kids.